Well, hi everybody. Hi, hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Claudia Ian, and um, I'm the biology faculty here on the campus. And uh, I have a little slideshow for you guys, of, um, showing just a few things about musk oxen over my years of studying them out in the field. And then I think after that we can hop in the van and see if maybe we'll find some. <laughs> I mean, they're around, but you never know where they hang out. They, you know, they don't follow anybody's schedule, but they're all so. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> But um, uh, I, s I studied musk oxen for my, both my master's and my PhD field work and then have done some studies since then, so musk oxen and other animals too. But uh, I spent a lot of time running around in the wild following them in all seasons, summer, winter, fall, any time. So uh, the way I set this up is there's a little bit of introductory stuff, you know, what is a musk ox and all that, and then um, sort of a, uh, a run through the years of the muskox. So basically what are the challenges in each season? Because that's the big deal up here is the change of the seasons. It's so dramatic in the Arctic. And all animals that live up here have to adapt to that in their unique ways. Muskox have their own way like all other animals. So that's me. <laughs> but that's about oh that's almost twenty years ago. And that's <laughs> that's Ingrid, uh, one that I bought and raised at the muskox farm in Fairbanks. Right? Oh. And um, I think she may still be alive. She would be uh, 21 now, so she was two in that picture. Yeah. So what is a muskox? <laughs> People always get confused because um, it's really badly named. It's not an ox uh, in the sense that it's not, uh, it's not cattle. It's not that closely related to bison or yaks or cows. And it doesn't have musk either. Uh, the substance musk that you put in a perfume comes from a different animal called the musk deer, the little thing that lives in Asia. So whoever first named them just totally screwed up and got it all wrong. <laughs> um, the Latin name is a little closer to the, to the truth. Ovibos means sheep cow. And in the large family of the bovids, that's where they belong, with the sheep and the cows. So here's a little, a little, uh, tech, um, you know, um, a little family tree. They belong to a large group of hoofed animals called the artiodactyls. The artiodactyls are all the hoofed mammals that have two or four hoofs on an even number of toes. And that includes all the antelopes, all the, you know, all the cows, sheep, uh, hippopotamus, giraffes, all of those things. And there's many, many families within those, deer, all the deer, giraffes, camels. And the <coughs> biggest of these families is the bovids. And the bovids, in turn, contain the oxen and the cattle, all gazelles and antelopes, you know, all those African antelopes, and the goats and sheep. And that's where the musk ox belongs, with the goats and sheep. So it's like a big hairy goat, basically, that sort of forgot how to climb. <laughs> <laughs> and their closest relatives, at least in North America, would be, uh, you know, the mountain goat or the bighorn sheep. Here in Alaska, their closest relative is the mountain goat. Or maybe the doll sheep, you know, there more closely related to muskox and certainly than bison would be. So that's a muskox. Now um, here's a distribution map. So this is, this is uh, the North Pole would be right in the middle here. So it's a circumpolar map, meaning that you see basically all the lands around the North Pole. Right, and here's Alaska. And all these hatched areas here in the northern Arctic of Canada and northern and eastern Greenland, those are areas where muskox persisted since the Ice Age and have never died out. Those are all areas where basically there's no people, you know, there's no, no permanent human habitation really, except for like one or two little villages in there. But these black areas are places where they have been reintroduced after they once were here but became extinct. And in Alaska, we have reintroduced populations, which originally came from eastern Greenland. So <laughs> they went on quite the odyssey. So they took, I uh, know uh, the numbers, you know, are not that great. There's only these might be a little outdated, these numbers, but worldwide there's only about maybe 130, maybe up to 150,000, something like that. The majority live in the Canadian Arctic. Here in Alaska we have maybe about 3,000 or so. So um, not that many left, really. <laughs> so how did they get here, get back here? They were here after the Ice Age, and people have hunted them during the Ice Age and probably in the millennia afterwards. And the last original muskox died out sometime in the mid-1800s. And then they were gone, but they were reintroduced in the, ni in the 1930s. They took 30 animals from Greenland and shipped them all the way to Alaska and released them on Nunavut Island, which is 
uh, an island in the southern part of the Bering Sea. And um, there they did well, and after they were fruitful and multiplied, they took animals from there and released them into other parts of Alaska. So somewhere about 3,000, 3,500 3 is what we have today. The numbers, again, these are not necessarily up to date. Um, populations, you know, fluctuate a little bit. All of those are descendants of those original 30. So they're all very closely related to one another, <laughs> which so far hasn't thrown up any problems yet that we know of, but, but one, one wonders about it, <laughs> certainly. So here's a bit, oh it's kind of an odd little graph, but it's, it's just sort of showing the year as a disk with here are the months in the middle. I don't know if you can see that from back there, but basically all the, the, the blue ones are the winter months. And uh, here is all the in interesting things that happen that I'll have in the slides that are to come. So where are we now? September. So now is a cool time actually because the fall colors are out, so it's kind of pretty. And it's the rutting season. So they're, they're busy making babies right now. So they're rutting and they're, they have very interesting social dynamics. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And then of course soon snow will come. Also their new hair coat is growing in now so they're <coughs> nice and fluffy looking already but getting even fluffier. Once it's winter, they spend a lot of time on winter ranges trying to avoid snow. They're not very good at walking through deep snow. So they try to be up high where the snow gets blown away and where it's hard and solid. And then springtime is calving. So by, by late April, early May, they're having babies. And then it greens up pretty quickly. And of course, summer is all about getting fat and eating as much as you can. So that's when food is plentiful and available and their main job is just get fat, get fat for the winter. So those are the kinds of things I'm going to show in the next couple of pictures here. So let's start with springtime. <laughs> this is uh, almost all the pictures I have are from the wild. This is an exception. This is Ingrid again, my, my bottle baby, and my grandchild there. <laughs> <laughs> Her first baby. <laughs> so she was born in Fairbanks on the farm. And uh, this guy, he's just a few hours old. So they, when they pop out, they're only about maybe um, 20, 25 pounds. Little woolly, you know, things. They're all... They're all legs, really. <laughs> no horns yet, thank goodness. That'd be hard on the mom, I guess. <laughs> and here she's trying to nudge him towards her rear end where the udder is. So the udder where he needs to drink is right between her hind legs, right, right under there. A bit hard to find at first. But um, they'll get, you know, they'll start poking around and bumping around down there till they find the nipples. So the udder is about the size of a fist with four nipples on it. <laughs> So yeah, those cows. So here's what, what a mom has to put up with. So they, uh, they get pregnant right about now, um, September, the rutting season. So um, then they are pregnant for about eight months. That's the gestation period. During that time, however, okay, well, and then she calves in April or May and begins lactating, producing milk. And that's tough on the body. Uh, producing milk is a, is a big physiological cost for the body. It costs a lot <coughs> of energy. So she keeps that up usually until about January when she uh, weans the calf in most cases. It varies a lot but that's sort of the average. But by then she'll be pregnant again possibly. If she's in good condition herself she can get pregnant again the next year. So there's a period in the early winter when she's practically eating for three <laughs> herself mm -hmm the calf she's nursing and the new fetus she's growing inside. Mm. But once she hits the third trimester or so, you know, when the fetus becomes bigger and draws on her resources towards the latter part of winter when, when food is scarce and they're kind of worn down a little and used up most of their fat reserves, that's when she says, okay, junior, you know, last year's junior, you, you're done now. You know, I don't no longer have anything for you. So that's when most of the cows will wean their, their babies. Here's a little guy I saw get born on Cape Cruisenstern, which is north of Kotzebue, where I did my PhD research. And this was May 6, 2002, actually. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it's, it had been warmer earlier, so some of the snow up here had already melted off. But that day it was, it was bitter cold, and the windshield, the windshield was 20 below or worse. And that little guy was just born into that kind of world. And and here he's about 30 minutes old, following mom, and she's just going to sit down somewhere and rest. She's oops, pooped. So we, here's a couple of cows that are a little older. So this is probably about July. So uh, if they're born in early May, they might be about two months old. They're just playing. 
they love to play. So as soon as they get a little older and bolder, they find each other. And the calves are always messing around and fooling around with one another. And they play games and they love to play king of the hill. <laughs> so whoever is up high is tall and powerful and important. And then the idea is the, 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 the somebody will try to knock them off the high perch. So they knock heads a lot.